For Algebra 8.3 notes, we are going to start multiplying not just monomials now, but binomials. So um, there are several different methods. I'm actually going to show you all the methods, and then um, you can pick which one you like best, and you can do whichever one works out for you. So after you've seen this whole lesson, you pick which one you think that you like the best, and it doesn't matter. You will get the right answer if you do it right. Um, no matter what method you choose. So um, one way that I don't use very often is using an area model. So here's an example. Um, all it's showing you is that 2x plus 1 is actually written across the top. See, there's x, x, and 1. So that's your 2x's plus another 1. And then x plus 2 is going down the side. So x plus 1 and another 1 is 2. And they're just kind of filling in the boxes. This is actually very similar to one we're going to do um, called the box method, where x times x is x squared, x times x is x squared, x times 1 is just x. And then what you do after you fill in all these little boxes is you put it all together. So you have 2x squareds, which is 2x squared. And then you have an x up here, and then you have four more down here, so a total of five x's. And then you have a 1 and a 1 filled in, which 1 plus 1 is 2, so plus 2. So an area model is very similar to a box method that we're going to do later. But I want you to have at least seen an area model um, in case you see another one and know how it works. Okay, the first method that I'm going to actually show you is distributive. So a lot of you are really good at distributing, so you might prefer this. So what happens if I ask you a question like 2x plus 4 times 3x minus 7, you take each one term out of the first set of parentheses, of either one really, but the way they did it, they took the first one out of the first set of parentheses, and you put it, um, well, they took it out here. You put it outside of the 3x minus 7, and you distribute it in. And then you get that answer. And then you take the 4 and put it outside, and then you distribute it into the 3x minus 7. So you have two separate answers that you have to then combine for one total answer. So um, let me work one out with you, and then I think you'll get it better. So let's say that this is our problem, x minus 6 and 4x plus 3. So if I take the x out, and I want to distribute it to just the 4x plus 3, let's do that. Pretend the minus 6 isn't even there. So we've just got x and then 4x plus 3. So you do that, you distribute, and I know you guys all know how to distribute. So x times 4x is 4x squared, and x times 3 is positive 3x. But you're not done. You now have to, now I'm going to scribble that out because I've already used it. Now you need to take this negative 6 and do the same thing and distribute it to the 4x plus 3. So now I'm going to put the negative 6 out here and the 4x plus 3, and now I'm going to distribute that. So negative 6 times 4x is negative 24x, and then negative 6 times 3 is negative 18. And now that you have these four different terms as these answers, you actually have to combine them all together. And what I notice is this and this is a like term. So when you put it all together in standard form, you're going to actually add those two together because they're like terms. So your final answer, put it in standard form, remember, means that your biggest exponent comes first, and then the ones that just have a variable, and then the constant, which doesn't have anything attached to it, last. So your final answer would be 4x squared. I'm going to go ahead in my head, and well, you should never do anything in your head, but negative 24x plus 3x. Here, I'll use a calculator, best practice. Negative 24 plus 3 is negative 21, so that'd be a minus 21x, and then minus 18. So using the distributive method, you just have to pull one of these terms out and dis distribute it by the other set of parentheses, and then pull the other one out and dis distribute it um, toward the other set of parentheses as well, and then combine all your answers into one trinomial like we did here. Okay, um, next I'm going to teach you guys, so that was called the distributive method. Next we're going to move on to the box method, and it's called using a table or the box method. It's going to look a lot like this area model up here. Um, I think a lot of kids tend to like the box method best, so this might be something you like to do better than separating these and distributing them. So I'm going to actually make a box, and I'm going to make a two by two box, so two going down and two going across. 
So it's got two across the top and two going down. And I'm going to separate each of these terms into its own box. So that is an x and that is a negative 3. So I'm going to put it across the top, an x across this part and a negative 3 across this part of the box. And then going down the side, I'm going to do 4x and negative 5. So that's a 4x and that is a negative 5. So across here, 4x is for this part of the box and negative 5 is for this part of the box. And it's going to look a lot like if you guys remember in elementary school doing like lattice method. Um, I don't know if you remember that, but um, this is very similar to that. So what you do is you take the two that are on either side of the box that you're filling in and you multiply them. So the answer that's going to go in this top left corner of the box, it's also kind of like Punnett square, if you remember in chemistry or, or your science class. So 4x times x goes inside this first box, and that would be 4x squared. Okay, then you've got the top right box, which is a negative 3 and a positive 4x. So if you're going to find where they, they meet, they meet in this box. 4x times negative 3 is negative 12x. Okay, then let's get the bottom box. That would be the x times the negative 5. So x times negative 5 is just negative 5x. And then be careful here, these are both negatives. So negative 5 times negative 3 is positive 15. And then you just put it all together in standard form. So the 4x squared is going to go first. Here's what you'll notice. Usually, not always, be careful here, not always, but usually the diagonals are like terms. And remember, for like terms, they can get added. So my final answer in standard form is going to be 4x squared. I'm going to add my negative 5x and my negative 12x, which is negative 17x. And then you've got a positive 15 here. So that is how to uh, multiply binomials using a box method. So now you've learned distributive where you pull out one term and distribute it and then pull out the other term and distribute it and then combine them all. And now you've learned box method. So let's try another box method. So this is, again, it's a binomial by a binomial, which is what tells us we're gonna do a two by two box. If it was more than two terms, times more than two terms, your box would be bigger or it might be longer depending on which way you put your extra ones. But since this is a two by two, we need to make a two by two box. So 3x and 1, I'm going to put across the top, and it does not matter. If you want to put the 3x and the 1 down the side and the x and the 4 across the top, that's fine. You'll get the same answer I do. I just have a tendency to put the first one always across the top. doesn't matter. x and positive 4 going down the side. And now you're just going to fill in your box by multiplying. So 3x times x is just going to be 3x squared. x times 1 is just 1x. Um, if you want to put the 1 there, you can. That's fine for now. 4 times 3x. 4 times 3x is 12x. And then 4 times 1 is just 4. And before you write your final answer, I like to check for like terms. These two are like terms, so they can get added. So my final answer in standard form is 3x squared. 12x plus 1x is plus 13x. And then that's a positive 4. Okay, um, go ahead and pause the video and try this you try one using the box method on your own down here and then you can fast forward through my answer to see if you did it right. Okay, for those of you who aren't quite ready, I'll go ahead and work this one out with you too. You can never have enough examples, I think. So 2x and negative 5 I'm going to put across the top. Remember that's a negative 5. The negative has to go with the term. And then that's an x plus 3, so an x and a 3. All right, filling in the box, 2x two time, two times x is 2x squared. x times negative 5 is negative 5x. 3 times 2x is 6x. And negative 5 times 3 is negative 15. I want to look for like terms. And you can add your like terms. So my final answer should be 2x squared. 6x plus negative 5x is plus 1x. I'm going to leave off the 1 now. I'm going to simplify it and then minus 15 down here. Okay, let's look at the next page. So for the next page, I'm gonna show you one last method um, to, 
to multiply binomials, and it is called the FOIL method. This is the method that I think you'll most use um, as you get into more like upper level math because it's a little bit quicker. You can do a lot of this in your head. So if you're somebody who likes to show a lot of work, you probably love box method. Oops, sorry, that's the wrong page. You probably love box method, which is what we just did. But if you're somebody who doesn't like to show as much work and you're really good at number crunching in your head, you're gonna really like this FOIL method. So FOIL is an acronym. It actually stands for firsts, outsides, insides, and then lasts. So first, outside, inside, last. Um, that's what FOIL stands for, F-O-I-L, first, outside, inside, last. And that is the order in which your terms get multiplied. So that's why it's cool to memorize F-O-I-L because you're gonna multiply the first terms, then the outside terms, then the inside terms, and then the last terms. And if you can do all that, then you have done every single thing that we did in the box method without showing your work, which is kind of cool. Um, if you can figure this out. So here's how it goes. So the firsts are the first term in each set of parentheses. So the 5x in this one times the 2x in this one. So 5x times 2x is 10x squared. Don't forget the squared. A lot of people who do things in their head forget that there's an x here and here. And when x's get multiplied, there are squared. They, they become 2x's, x squared. Okay, the next one is the O, which is outsides. Those are the two outermost outside terms. So the 5x and the times 1. So 5x times 1 is just 5x. So I'm going to put positive plus 5x. Okay, the third letter in the acronym FOIL is insides. So those are your inside two, the two that are the closest together, the two that are the most inside um, out of all four of these terms. And so that's a negative three and a times two X. So negative three times two X is negative six X. And then the very last letter is lasts. So the last term in each set of parentheses. So it's this last term in this set of parentheses and this last term in this set of parentheses. So the negative three times positive one. So negative three times one is just negative three. So besides me making little dots and little rainbows here, you're finished um, without showing any work. The only thing is, just like in the just like in the box method, the middle two terms are usually like terms. Remember that. So same thing here. When you foil, a lot of times the middle two terms are like terms. So we've got a five x here and a minus six x. So we are going to have to combine those. So actually. Your final answer is 10x squared minus x, because 5 minus 6 is negative 1, minus 3. Okay, so it's mostly done in your head. Um, some people, as you get older and as you do foiling a lot more often, a lot of people go ahead and combine the outsides and the insides in their head. They're able to go to do this rainbow and go, okay, 5x minus 6x, and they go ahead and just put the negative 1x right there because they've been able to combine the outsides and the insides together um, without writing it out. I would not suggest doing that right now because you're just learning how to do this, and I think the more work you show, the less chance there will be for you making a mistake. So let's try to FOIL this next one. So FOIL first is the first set of terms so the first one in this and the first one in this set of parentheses. 3x times x would be 3x squared. Okay, the O is outsides. Those are your two outsides, 3x and 2. 3x times 2 is 6x. The insides are next. Negative 4 times x is just negative 4x. And again, I guess you could do those two in your head if you knew that you were going to get 6x minus 4x. You could go ahead and combine those in your head. Um, Again, wouldn't recommend it right now. And then L is lasts. So that's the last term in each set of parentheses. So negative four times two is negative eight. So final answer, three X squared, six X minus four X is plus two X, and then minus eight. All right, this is a good time to go ahead and pause the video and do the you try and then push play again and see if you did it right. All right, if you're not quite ready to 
do it on your own yet, FOIL would be first times first, n times 4n is 4n squared. Outsides would be n times negative 7, which is just negative 7n. Insides would be negative 6 times 4n, which is negative 24n. And then lasts are negative 6 times negative 7. Negative times negative is positive 42. And remember, your two in the middle usually are like terms, which they are again here. So final answer should be 4n squared. Uh, what is that? Minus 31? Minus 31n, negative 7 minus 24. See how I'm checking on my calculator? <laughs> negative 31n plus 42. Okay. Um, yeah, go ahead and push pause again if you already started it back up and you choose your favorite method to multiply those. So I am going to, um, I'm gonna just stick with FOIL right now. So let's go ahead and do first times first and you can do it any way you want. If you wanna box this or distribute, distributive method, you can too. So first times first, two P squared times two P. This is a little harder because it's got a squared already. So two P squared, times 2p is going to be 4p to the third. Okay, outsides are 2p squared times negative 5, which is negative 10p squared. Insides are 2p plus times 3, which would be positive 6p. And then last and last would be 3 times negative 5, which is negative 15. My middle two are not like terms. This one is squared and this one's not. So we have um, bigger than a trinomial. We have a polynomial here with four terms. None of them are like terms. None of them can be combined. So that's your final answer there. Okay, for the last part of today's lesson, um, we are gonna either use distributive property or box method because now I'm giving you, instead of just a binomial times a binomial, binomial we now have a trinomial times a binomial. So remember, we have three terms times two terms. So you're not going to be able to FOIL this. I'm sorry to tell you, once we go bigger than two times two, uh, sorry, two terms times two terms, a binomial times a binomial, you can't FOIL anymore. So you're going to have to use either distributive or the box method. So I'll do one of each. So let's um, take this first one and distribute. So I'm going to take this 2x and I'm gonna stick it in front of this trinomial and I'm gonna distribute it through. So 2x, I'm gonna put out in front of 3x squared plus x minus five. 3x squared plus x minus five. And I should have written it further over because it looks like we have another one to do over here. So I'm gonna tr try to start writing kind of tiny. Once I distribute the 2x to all three of these terms, that would be 6x cubed um, plus 2x squared minus 10x. Okay, so now I've distributed the 2x, so I've done with that one. Now I'm going to distribute the negative 7 through this whole trinomial. So I'm going to put a negative 7 out here. 3x squared plus x minus 5. I'm going to distribute that negative 7 all the way through. So negative 7 times 3x squared would be negative 21 x squared. Negative seven times x is just negative seven x. And then negative seven times negative five is positive 35. So now I've gotta put this whole answer with all six of these terms all together in standard form, except I notice that this one is a like term with this one, so I can add those. And then this one is a like term with this one, so I can also add those. So my final answer is 6x cubed. Uh, these are gonna get added. So that would be negative 21 plus two is negative 19x squared. These two can get added. So that's negative 10 and negative seven, which is negative 17x and then plus 35. Whew, that was a big one. Okay, and that's a good review of distributing also. As long as you separate out each of these terms and distribute it through all the rest of the stuff, you're good. Okay, and then let's practice one more box method, but this time our box is not gonna be a two by two box. It is three terms 
by two terms. So it's going to have to be a three by two box. And you can do the three going down or the three going across. It does not matter. Um, I'm going to do three going across. So I'm going to make my three by two box going like this. Okay, and again, it doesn't matter. You can do it um, vertically if you'd like, but I'm going to put the three terms across the top here. So 2x squared, I'm going to put over this box, negative 3x here, and then 1 here. And then down the side is going to be my x and my negative 3. So x and negative 3. All right, and all you're going to do again, if you forgot box method, you're just filling it in by multiplying. So 2x squared times x is 2x cubed x times negative 3x is negative 3x squared. x times 1 is just 1x. I'll go ahead and put the 1 in it for now. The next row down is going to be negative 3 times 2x squared, which is negative 6x squared. Negative 3 times negative 3x is positive 9x. And then negative 3 times 1 is just negative 3. Okay, I'm looking for like terms, and it looks diagonally like these are like terms, and these are like terms. So when you have like terms, you, those can get added to each other. So my final answer here is 2x cubed, uh, negative 6x squared plus negative 3x squared is negative 9x squared. 9x plus 1x is plus 10x, and then you've got your minus 3. So I don't care which of those you prefer, but you can't FOIL it if it's a trinomial. You can only FOIL it, use the FOIL method, sorry, if it's a binomial times a binomial. So down here, you've got to either do distributive or box method. I don't care which one. Pick your favorite one of those and push pause and do the you try at the bottom, which is your last one for today, and check your answer with mine as soon as you're done. Okay, I'm going to do box method again. So I'm going to set up a three by two box again, just like I did in the previous problem. And if you wanted to distribute this, great, doesn't matter. Um, across the top, I have to do this one because that's my trinomial. So x squared, 3x, and negative 4. And then down the side is going to be my x and my 2, so x and 2. And again, to fill in the box, you multiply. So x squared times x is x cubed. 3x times x is 3x squared. Negative 4 times x is negative 4x. 2 times x squared is 2x squared. 2 times 3x is 6x. And 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. I'm going through looking for like terms. Looks like these are like terms, so those are going to get added. And these are also like terms, so those are going to get added. So my final answer in standard form would be x cubed. 2x squared plus 3x squared is plus 5x squared. 6x plus negative 4x is positive 2x. And then minus 8. 